Hello there. You must be CW Lemoy number 7650. Welcome to Eunice. I'm Arturo, the owner of this aero club. I'm assuming you know the book, Inside and Out. Damn right. Yeah. Damn straight. You got it. Uh oh. Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. Is it worth it? Today it's available for pre order. Embargoes have been lifted, and I was one of the first to get to actually try the new Flight Sim slash game and the updates from Microsoft Flight Sim 2024. So today we're going to talk about my first impressions, kind of the stuff that I think is awesome, some stuff that I think is not so awesome, some stuff I think they really need to change. So I was invited out to the Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 unveiling. You can check out the vlog of that day's experience. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. It'll be uploaded as a separate video. But I just wanted to talk about Microsoft Flight Sim and what's different in 2024. Disclaimer, all the gameplay stuff that we did was beta and pre-release so some stuff didn't work some stuff really didn't work and for, through no fault of their own they had some network issues on the computers themselves but uh, overall i think we got a good feel of it the event started with some information on kind of what's changed the biggest thing the textures are better so they've gone out and and higher resolution upgraded airports uh, how they procedurally draw things. The environment looks better. The environment itself is way better because now they've got grass and there's tire tracks and there's all kinds of things that you can interact with the environment that they didn't have before, which I think is really cool. They've got a ton of aircraft and they've gotten with some of the developers out in the community and made this big community outreach thing that I also think is going to be uh, something that they're going to do in the future to try to incorporate aircraft from developers out in the wild. The game itself is smaller as far as the footprint on your hard drive because now it relies more on a cache and kind of uh, just-in-time processing to where as you need it, it downloads it and it displays it for you. Allegedly, that's going to make for more headroom with multi-threading and also allow for better processing times, quicker load times, all that stuff. I didn't really see quicker load times when I was there, but I think it was just because, again, it's a it's a beta version. It's got animals. They went with a, a zoo game and actually put real animals in there, which is kind of cool if you're into that sort of thing. And the physics model is obviously a little bit more... Uh, fine-tuned and they use more data points to create uh, the physics so in general the, it should feel like more like a real airplane uh, as it goes around and in my experience flying it I didn't really see a difference but I'm always of the mindset that it's doesn't matter if it's a professional grade sim or a, a game off the shelf it's very hard for me especially with no feel to kind of tell what's real and what's not. There's some stuff that's just completely ridiculous. Like I was doing a challenge with A-10 and it departed control flight. And I was like, yeah, I don't think that's really a thing. But from my experience with the gameplay, the very first thing I wanted to do was create a uh, character and go do the missions and career because the career, the missions were the thing from the trailer that I thought was kind of going to be the best. And the concept is great i love the idea that they're going to use this to inspire the next generation in fact i talked to uh, Jorg about it and that's their goal is just to introduce people to aviation one thing that i want to ask you and kind of commend you on you talk about accessibility with microsoft flight sim and my big thing with my channel is like make them tell you no trying to inspire the next generation because we have a pilot shortage nationwide worldwide stuff like that is that part of your consideration as you move towards missions you know when i first saw the release trailer the first thing i said was this is awesome because a kid who doesn't know how to do this will kind of get a good idea of the process is that part of your thought matrix it definitely is and it's because of who talks to me it's actually probably just I'm, i try to listen yeah. honestly in life and so I talk to manufacturers a lot, 
and they tell me what you just said. Hey, there's a pilot shortage. Mm -hmm. Like China alone, I think needs 400,000 pilots, 800,000 worldwide. There's not enough level yeah. D. There's not enough in the entire spectrum of learning. There's not enough. And they all say, please help us. Um, the other thing that's happening is we talk to stuff like Sécurité Civile, which probably doesn't tell you much, but it's the it's the center of firefighting in Europe. Mm -hmm. This happens to be in France. And they said, we, we, we need more people. Like, we need yeah. recruitment. And I said, okay, and same with the, uh, the Coast Guard. I, I talk to the Coast Guard a lot because I yeah. live in Seattle. And they have the same problem. They're like, can we get people in a playful way to understand what we do and hopefully fall in love or see the purpose of it all and, 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 and stay? Mm -hmm. and, and so they all volunteered. That's the cool thing. Like, um, they, they all said, hey, if you want to know how we do our job, I mean, the, the firefighting guys are like, we tell you how, how fire propagates. We tell you how to do corridors. We tell you that they want us to be successful. And I think that's why it's probably the thing that makes me the most happy about this entire endeavor of Flight Sim. It's, it's, it was always like the, the, as real as real gets, or, you know, the, mm -hmm. as real as it gets, all that stuff. But I think we're really impacting the real world. That's what yeah. that what's make, make, makes me so happy. And I think that's where we can really make a difference. So when you show up, you have a character that you create. So you, you know, make them look like you or make them look some semblance of you or whatever's close enough. And then you pick an airport that's not necessarily a large airport. So they don't have them all. Like I learned how to fly out of Opelousas, Louisiana. That wasn't one of the choices. Lakefront wasn't a choice either. So I went to Eunice, Louisiana. Uh, and you do go through a cutscene, and you meet your instructor and you do a discovery flight where the instructor taxis you out and then you take off and then fly around through the little squares and then they say okay your introductory flight's over now you've unlocked the ability to go and do training so you can do all the training takeoff landing uh, all that stuff and then as you progress you get to your private pilot check ride and then that unlocks instrument check ride commercial check ride going to helicopters uh, and then that is how you unlock the missions so once you have that you've got missions such as charter search and rescue, firefighting, uh, ag spraying, both in airplanes and helicopters, and all the way up to ATP. And then that will unlock special missions like the A400 assault landings and stuff like that. The only way to get to the missions is by doing the career. So this was my biggest point of contention, and I think this is going to annoy people, including myself, because I talked to the developers about it. And my first point right out the gate was, is there a way to skip it because in the test there was no way until they went to the advanced options developer options and pulled another save game and i was able to go try like firefighting and ag spraying and stuff like that those missions were a lot of fun they're really cool they have audio associated with it so it's not just you go do it and there's no feedback there's actually like in firefighting there's like a the jtac equivalent there and the ag spraying you know you've got somebody telling you hey this field needs this or whatever but the only way to get to that is you have to go and do all the check rides. There's tests. And the developers were adamant that that is required to give people a good baseline to know how to fly and that they would be lost without it. And there's no instant action version like DCS or other games where you can skip it and just go play the missions that you want. So first, that's the reason why we built the carrier this way is like, you have to unlock those certification and those things. But for someone who is not acclimate, acclimated, acclimated. Yeah. Um, uh, they will need to do the trainings and even sometimes do several of those missions in order to really feel good with just flying a plane, you know? Yeah. Uh, but if you are already comfortable, so take, <laughs> typically I do not do anymore do any of the training. I directly go to the exam. Mm -hmm. And, and thanks to this, you basically bypass all, all, the, all the trainings and you can drive your way pretty fast to the type of activity you want to do. And so it's the same for the certification thing. The reason why we did this is both for what we've observed based on the user research we, we, we made is like for the majority, the, the huge majority of people playing the game, it's, it's if, if we don't do this, they are lost. The other argument I would have for you, it's the fact that, uh, you know, when you are a simmer, you play a lot. You play a lot. So basically, it's, a, it's a, this issue we are talking about. It's like, 
in in six hour, you guys, you will gonna be have you you will gonna have open almost everything. I mean everything you want to have open. Mm. So it's not like if you would have to farm during three weeks before you can even start to do the the the, the, right. the, the Canada experience. So on the lifespan of the game, it's not a big deal. You will basically okay have to wait for I don't know two three days of play <laughs> before you can actually uh, maybe uh, depending on the amount of time. But basically, it's a weekend. I don't like that. I don't think flight simmers that have been doing this a while are going to like that because I personally have no interest in Cessnas. Like I flew Cessnas for a long time. I've got a real world ATP. I've flown fighters. I've flown airliners. I've flown helicopters. I just want to go do firefighting or or just a simple mission. Now, an upgrade program within those missions, okay, I can see that. But to have to start as a private pilot, and you can skip, you can skip and just do the check rides. But, you know, I, he said in a weekend, which who has time for that? I don't. You know, I just want to fly for an hour and a half, about an hour, hour and a half, and be done. And so I gave him that feedback. I don't know how well received it was, but I think that, that is something that they need to fix. And I think a lot of other creators that were there agreed with that because just people don't have the patience for it. I don't have the patience for it. You know, I, I mean, I don't want to play video game check rides. So that part, not that great. The missions themselves, though, once you get to it, because I was able to skip as part of the developer options, they're fun. They're good missions. Crop dusting was a lot of fun. I know T-Bear would probably like that. The helicopter crop dusting, it was hard with the controller I had because you have to land on the truck and I absolutely wasn't able to do that. That's, yeah. The other missions I didn't get to, I ran out of time on the firefighting and stuff like that. So I'm not 100% sure, but it looked like it was going to be really awesome, especially with the calm and you could see the, the fire in the distance and stuff. The other downside too is that it's not part of free flight and it's not multiplayer. So, you know, you can't just create a mission and then go fly it or uh, go fly with your friend. It is just single player and just part of the career. So I think that is the negative draw. Now, if you go from the beginning to the end, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. And if you're somebody that's new to aviation, I think it's going to be a great way to get your feet wet. And I love the recruiting aspect of it just for aviation in general, because it will show a kid, Hey, here's how it is. Cause that part is accurate. You know, it's got your high performance endorsement, your, your all your ratings and all that stuff. So it kind of shows people, here's the path. So I like that it exists. I don't like that it's mandatory. As far as the other parts of the game, challenges, there were only two challenges available in this. And the developer said the idea was for it to be about two minutes. So, you know, some, some little quick thing you can do in, in two to four minutes just to have fun. And there's leaderboards and you're ranked and you go do that. It's a little arcadey. Uh, the only thing that was available was the A10 speed run, which the way they had placed the instructions, it was kind of hard to figure out what you were supposed to be doing, like how you got points, because, you know, do it a couple times. You're like, oh, I see lower score is better, not higher score, because it's based on how high you are versus your time and all this stuff. Uh, the A10 doesn't really fly like an A10, or at least the A10 sims I've flown. But that's to be expected. I've never really seen them fly all that well. It's hard for them to get data, right? And so I also tried the landing challenge with the helicopter, which I can't really talk to because I had the assists on because I'm running uh, a fighter cockpit, not a collective and, and throttle. But uh, it just seems it seemed like a fun thing to do. And I'm sure there's more challenges that'll be there that will be fun as well. So I'm not going to say it's bad or good. I, I don't know that I would do a lot of them but I can see the utility and it seems like it's a lot of carryover from the previous game. As far as the free flight goes, uh, first thing I did was got in the helicopter and flew in new Orleans and lo and behold, it's not updated and it's not just not updated, but it is from previous versions of the airport when the terminal was on the South side and they had even built, they even started building the new terminal, which has been around, I think since at least COVID 2019, maybe 2020. So the fact that it's still not up, they asked York, I'm like, Hey man, come on. You told me last time you were going to give me a good new Orleans. The good part of new Orleans that he did give me was the bridge uh, is updated because you have another feature called photo missions and there's the world bridges. So you can go take pictures in certain angles and Hey, go take a picture of this with this background and all that stuff. So 
they've updated that and the Crescent City connection looks good. The Superdome looks good. Smoothie King, Smoothie King Center and all that stuff. That all looks great. Um, so I guess the city looks good, but the airport is just not right. So maybe eventually they'll upgrade that and give me a good New Orleans so I can go check my top of tees uh, in virtual life there as well. But the graphics look better overall, look sharper. Could I tell a huge difference? Eh, not really. And it still has that same, I call it the zombie imaging where like the bridge shadows from the satellite res, instead of having like a real shadow where you can tell there's something underneath, it just kind of puts that long, um, like blurred thing underneath it for the shadow. It's still doing that. And I don't know if that's something they're going to fix by release or what. So I thought that part was a little weird, but uh, overall, uh, it does look better and it does have like dust particles and stuff. So the graphics are improved and I'm, I didn't get to try VR, which is what I usually use. So I'd be interested to see how VR performance will improve or degrade based on, you know, higher resolution stuff. I think it'll be improved, but I'm not really sure. I also tried cause I'm a glutton for punishment there at the end. I was going to just do a pushback flight 737 from Dallas to new Orleans and I think because it was a pre-release version in beta, I got stuck on the walk around. So that's a new thing too. The game wants you to do walk arounds and pull like pedo covers and engine plugs and all that stuff. And there are consequences if you don't, but on a 737, I've never in my career needed to do that. So I don't know why it wanted me to do that at the gate. It's probably some setting that I screwed up and I couldn't get, past that part there was, was just some buggy stuff that they just didn't have quite right so uh that is part of the career mode as well and the career mode going back to that also has some other persistent stuff that i think is cool like you you build income and reputation and if you don't fly the mission right you know your reputation goes down and if you crash the plane you can if you own the plane you'll lose the plane if you break the plane, you'll have to fix the plane because you have owner modes and you can buy your, I mean, if you got enough money, you could buy your own airline, which that to me is really cool. But the persistence thing is hit or miss, right? Because if I'm flying around and the power goes out, I just lost that reputation. If I'm flying around and I quit because I have to go do something else, I lose that reputation and that money. So there's no like soft exit where, Hey, I can pick this up later or whatever. I, you're just SOL, you lose the progress and, you know, actually go backwards. So that's kind of eh, not, not great, but I think that's common in other games as well. But it, it's just cool that it has that kind of capability. And, you know, I think people will enjoy doing that, uh, especially with failures. You know, if you're not maintaining the aircraft, you may have a, a, a failure of some sort. So that, I thought that was, that was really cool. As far as the uh, weather goes, they added cirrus clouds. I think they fixed the lightning stuff. There's more weather capability, so it should look a little better. Thicker clouds, so uh, and they're also talking about doing like a 24-hour look back for weather. So if you fly through a thunderstorm, it actually looks like you're bouncing around in a cloud, not just these real thin, wispy clouds if for a thunderstorm. So uh, the weather model has increased significantly. Didn't get to try that, though, so uh, I don't know how it's going to work, but Will I try it on day one? Yeah, I think having it on my own system in VR will probably be a lot better with my own controllers than, you know, sitting at the at that console. But I think there's a lot of promise with the game. And just like Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, there's going to be a lot of updates. There's going to be a lot of support for it. And everything from Flight Sim 2020 is, is compatible with 2024. So if you bought modules and you bought uh, scenery and all that stuff, it all can go in your community folder and still be used in 2024. So it's not like it's all lost because I've got some stuff too, helicopters and all that stuff that I'm going to try once it comes out. So uh, I'm excited for it and I hope they're going to take some of these suggestions and implement them, especially with an instant action or an ability to skip around in the career without having to do all the check rides and stuff. And um, I think that some people are going to be disappointed with that, but just like anything else, they'll get over it and then they'll realize it's it's an improvement overall with a better game engine and it'll be just as much fun as before. Uh, it's available for pre-order now. I think it comes out in a couple months. So uh, I'm excited to try it and see what they've done to 
develop it between now and when it actually comes out and release and then what they do to improve it. Like I said, they've been very community oriented and trying to improve the game. So, uh, but let me know in the comments what you think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you do want to go and, and do Cessna check rides from day one. Um, that's just not for me. I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.